Hello. Welcome to Marketing Management Unit 3. Uh, we, what we're going to do today is we're going to continue on our objective setting. Which, what, what, what was that? Remember the four steps of strategic marketing planning, objective setting, situation analysis, strategic formulation, and control and evaluation. We are still on the first step as left from the last unit. So continuing on objective setting, we're going to look at vision, values, and differential advantage. But what did we look at uh, last time? We looked at the mission statement. And if you remember, we had set up something to think about until this unit. The question was that we were supposed to think about was the mission or the definition of the business of a bank. Probably most of you must have said banks sell money. They provide security for your money. And I'll say, no, banks don't sell money. That would be a product-oriented thinking because you go to the bank, you give money, you get money. So obviously we think from a product point of view, it will say they sell money. But we all go through problems. Just forget the bank for a second and think about our everyday problems. Like we need a good, reliable car. We need to educate our children. Uh, we need a bigger house. We worry about our health. We like to go shopping uh, without the need of cash. You may get short of cash when you want to buy something, and it can be a bargain, and you may lose that bargain if you don't have enough cash. Or worse, you may get embarrassed if you don't have enough cash at the till when you are in a shop or in a supermarket. Now, for all these, banks offer us different products. What do they use? What do they offer us? They offer us solutions. Like if you want a new car, they'll give you car loans. If you want to buy yourself a music set, a new uh, smart telephone or something else, they'll give you personal loans. If you want to uh, buy a new house or extend your existing one, they'll give you a mortgage. If you're worried about your health and you want to get a better health care, in the future, they'll give you a health insurance. And for your shopping concerns of running out of cash, extending your buying power, they'll offer you credit cards. All these are the products of a, uh, of a bank. Think of a bank like a supermarket. You go into a supermarket, you have the shelves. On the shelves, you have different products. Household detergents, milk, bread, uh, can, food, and so on. So when you go to a bank, the shelves include these car loans, credit cards, checkbooks, personal loans, mortgages, insurances. These are all little package products. So why do we need a bank? Remember our question to get the mission statement right? Why do I need this company? Why do I need this product? Why does the society want it? Is the right question to formulate the mission. So why do we need a bank? To solve our problems, which can be solved financially. So if you have a problem that you need to solve, and the solution can be achieved, through financial means, then the banks can come designing and offering you a product. So can we say that the mission of a bank, say a commercial bank, is to provide financial solutions to people's problems? Repeat that. The mission of a bank is to provide financial solutions to people's problems. Does it make sense? Yes. Because if you think like that, as a bank, you're thinking as an answer to the question, why do society want me? Well, they want me to provide financial solutions to their 
uh, lives through their life problems. So I go out and watch people, observe them, listen to them, do my research, right, to find out what solutions do they have so I can provide them with financial solutions. Most of you have got, you need education, but education is expensive, right? You can pay it in the future, but you can't pay it now. So a bank can come out and say, wait a minute, I have a solution for you. I can give you a student's loan and a payment plan. When you finish your education, you pay me this much monthly. And this is the price, the price being the interest. If you like the solution, you buy it. If you don't like, like the solution, you don't buy it. And the bank will have to come up with another solution. That's the end of the mission statement. Uh, soon, uh, we will have more questions on mission statements for you to work as your uh, term assessment. But now let's look at another concept in objective setting after the mission, is the corporate vision. Now, vision comes from the word to see, to see something. Now, seeing is simple. I can see this, I can see that. I can't see you, but you can see me, okay? But here, by vision, we mean what you can see for the future. So, we call it an attainable dream, not a dream that it is, uh, it's not attain, attainable. That you may call a fantasy. We are not talking about a fantasy. We are talking about an attain, attainable dream. A vision is a prediction of what the future has, holds, and how you want to be in that uh, future. What do you want to see yourself as in that future? A vision must be parallel to your mission. What was your mission? Your job. The definition of your business must be parallel to what you see yourself or what you want to see yourself in the future. A vision must be simple to understand. Why? Well, as a vision activates people. It motivates them. And so to be motivated, to be activated, they have to understand it. It must be simple uh, in words. It must be structured in view of future opportunities and threats for the company. You must have all done SWOT, SWOT analysis. The SWOT is for today. Here, you take the two parts of the SWOT, opportunities and threats, and you do it for the future. You do it for its strengths and weaknesses as well, predicting what they will be, thinking about what you can do. And then in that future situation, you have a dream. This is where I want to be. Of course, it's, it's easier said than done. Let's look at how we do it. So let's go back to our petrol station. In view of the predicted competition, the petrol station may set up a vision saying, we will be the most popular petrol station in town. Remember the mission of the petrol station? You do. Now, this is their vision. All petrol stations are the same, they say, but we want to be the most popular. Notice, not the biggest, but the most popular. Or, in the view that uh, people are concerned about the environment, a petrol station may say, we will be a green petrol station. We will be the greenest, not blue, green. Green means so if they say we will be a green uh, petrol station, then all the workers, all the management will think about green products, not to sell leaded petrol, keep it clean, keep the environment of the uh, petrol station maybe forested, treat green, uh, sell green products, try not to put up a lot of waste, uh, and maybe help the environmental groups and there will be a green station. So let's go back to the vision concept again. It means, we can say, ability to see. Ability to see. What? The future. The history has witnessed many famous people who had visions. These people have moved masses, masses of other people. 
because they had visions. But you only need to move your company and the stakeholders. A good vision motivates and directs people. Here are some famous visions for companies. Um, Sony's vision, to be a company that inspires and fulfills your curiosity. You like that? Fulfills my curiosity. Facebook's vision, one of the newest companies and most successful. To give people the power to share and make the world more open and connected. More open and connected. I can even I can understand that. More open. I'll see the whole world. There'll be nothing hidden. And I'll be connected to that. And who will be doing this? Who will be giving me this power? Facebook. I'm not an employee, but this has inspired me as well. So it's a good vision. Twitter's vision, which must be similar, I think, to give everyone the power. Can you see? Facebook and Twitter parallel. They all both start to give people, to give everyone the power to create and share ideas and information instantly at the touch of a button without barriers, without censorship, without the barriers of technology. I will be in touch with the whole world I'll create ideas, I'll share ideas, and I will be part of that information process. Who will give me that power? Twitter. That's Twitter vision. Do you know any successful visions in, in history? Uh, the, the most famous vision that I can remember, political vision, is starts with, I have a dream. So what is a vision? A dream. I have a dream that you know the rest. Okay. Now, after vision and mission, in the corporate is, uh, mission statement, you have to talk about values. Now, values are what makes an individual. Values are what makes a company. Values are what makes a society? Values are your character. Values are your personality, your culture. Values direct you. Values direct you, motivate you, you, your family, your company, and the whole society. Change a value and many things can change in society. Now, let's look at what they're in a company case. In the company case, values are what they do, what they don't do. They must be designed in parallel to the mission and the vision statements. What we will do, what we will not do. Let's look more into it. Let's look at the Starbucks values as an example. Looking at examples is an easy way of understanding things. The Starbucks says, with our partners, our coffee, and our customers at our core, we live these values, they say. Hmm. What do they live? Creating a culture of warmth and belonging where everyone is welcome. So what are they saying? We do like hospitality. We are hospitable. Acting with courage, challenging the status quo, and finding new ways to grow our company and each other. So we love change, they say. Being present, connecting with transparency, dignity, and respect. So they need respect. Delivering our best in all we do, holding ourselves, accounting for results. So we are responsible on what we do, they're saying. We are performance driven through the lens of humanity. So. We work for humanity. We try to make people happy. This is what I understand from their values. So all this is a list of all the things they do, actually. They haven't given the things they don't. But it will tell you that the opposites of, of these statements are the things that they don't do. Now, what do these values do? Let's look at it uh, closely again. Core values are what support the vision shape the culture, 
and reflect what a company values. They are the essence of the company's identity, as we said before, the principles, beliefs, and philosophy. Okay? Right. Core values also help companies in the decision-making pro uh, process, don't they? If you know what to do and what not to do, you don't have to keep on looking at your planning or some uh, forums, some uh, bureaucratic documents. You know what you're allowed to do, or what you want to do, or what you don't want to do. We have, these are policies. We have a policy of uh, receiving com customer complaints and changing anything you buy without any question. I remember that was a company, who was it? Marks and Spencer's, I think. You buy something, you're not satisfied by it, you take it to them, and they'll change it without asking you why you want to change it. That's a policy. That's a value, which stands from the value of we put our customers' happiness first. We put our customer satisfaction first value. OK? Uh, core values educate clients, your customers, and potential customers about what the company is and the identity of the company, obviously. They set up your personality. Core values are becoming primary recruiting and retention tools. Now, what makes a company? It's people. They asked Richard, uh, they asked the famous director, which is more important, customers, the company, or the shareholders? S sorry, the customers, employees or the shareholders. He said employees. They said to him, why? Aren't the customers more important? He said, no. Employees will make customers happy and the customers will make shareholders happy. Logical. So we want to employ good employees and they must go with our company values. So you can use the values at interviews as well. Do you agree with these values? I want you, if you want to work with me, this is what we want. We value this. For example, we value equal opportunity policies. Uh, do you believe in equal opportunity policies? What are they for you? Okay. Now, we go to the last concept on a typical, there are more concepts, of course, but on a typical corporate mission statement, there are four concepts. Uh, vision, mission, values, and competitive advantage. They also, it's also called the competitive edge or the differential advantage sometimes. Yeah. I always ask, what's the difference between a, a cat and a lion? What's the difference? Physically, one of them is bigger, you can say. Yeah, they're bigger. But structurally, as a body type, they're the same. Same type of teeth, same type of skeleton joints, uh, agility, they eat the same, but what makes a lion a lion? Is it size? Well, what I mean to say is, anybody can be a cat. Anyone can come and copy a plan. A plan, after all, is a written document. Anyone can come up and pinch it from you and follow the same steps. It may win over you, is that true? No. What makes a company win is their competitive advantage. You must have something, or some things, hopefully, that are better than your competitors in the eyes of the customers. If the customers think you have that advantage, they'll come to you. Now, what is this competitive advantage? It's something to do with competition, as I said. It's an advantage over competitors. Gained by offering consumers greater value. Remember customer value from the first unit? You do. Good. Offering the customers more value than the competitors. Then uh, you will have uh, a competitive advantage. For me, the biggest competitive advantage of Coca-Cola is not that secret taste where the recipe is locked somewhere in a safe, they say, but 
is competitive advantage in distribution. They have intensive and extensive distribution everywhere. You can find Coca-Cola everywhere, ready to drink cold if you like. That distribution gives them competitive advantage to be everywhere before any other comp competing drink, competing soft drink. Now, let's ask the questions again. What gives a company competitive advantage? Are we going to formulate it? What makes it stand out of competition? How should a company plan? This is the actual question. And work out for comp competitive advantage for itself. How what will I know? I mean, what is my competitive advantage as an individual? How would you know? What should be the first step? The first step, of course, is the customer. You're going to look at the customer and see what they value first. And then think about this. According to Michael Porter, uh, there are two basic types of competitive advantage. Doing something at a lower cost. I'm not talking about price, be careful. Cost. I can sell this, I can produce this water at a lower cost than my competitors. That will improve my profit. Or I can make it differentiated. I can make it better. How to make water better, I don't know, but better. Maybe the packaging, the bottle better. And I can Approach this broadly or narrowly. What does that mean, broadly and narrowly? Let's see. Right. So we can do two things, cost and differentiation. What was cost again? Producing the same thing at a lower cost. What was differentiation? Well, in simple terms, adding more benefits or better benefits to your product design or uh, the other parts of your company offering, like the product can be the same, but you can give a better service, better distribution like Coca-Cola. All these add up to your differentiation, which is offering better benefits, as I said. But there's also focus. What is this focus? What are these broad and narrow? Well, when they talk about broad and narrow and focus, what they're talking about, or what we're talking about is number of segments. If you're targeting a small segment, one segment, then uh, you are, have a narrow scope. You're a small company, you can't compete with the big companies, so you narrow your scope on one single segment. And you say, in this segment, I'm gonna be the cost leader. I'm gonna produce these people, uh, then uh, uh, lower, a product lower cost lower pro, lower cost of products than my competitors or you can say i'm going to differentiate my products giving an example this works for a small grocery shop which has a which has a big supermarket hypermarket next to it how is he going to survive well the grocery manager we look at we look at uh, into the market there might be some people who might want a personal service, a special products. If there are such people, enough for the grocery shop, bingo. Then he can go for narrow differentiation focus. He can stock products that the supermarket wouldn't because there won't be many buyers for those special, for those people with special needs. He can uh, give those people some special uh, attention, like personal attention, knowing them by name, sometimes taking the goods to their houses. This could be elderly people, for example, or this could be some religious group that eats something different, like they can eat kosher food and things like that. Okay. Now, whereas big companies who are addressing, who are targeting many segments, they have a broad scope. For many people, they can become the cost leader, produce things at a lower cost, or they can differentiate themselves. Okay. Now, in a nutshell, we almost come to the end of this unit. In a nutshell, let's sum summarize it. What does mission say? It says that, asks, 
why we exist. So if you think, why, why do I exist? You're talking about your mission. Mission is what you want to be. What you want to be. This is funny. It reminds me of my childhood when people used to say to me, what do you want to be when you grow up? In other words, they were asking me, what's your vision? Correct? Good question. Values. What we believe in and how we will behave. Values, as I said, will give you your personality. What you believe in and what you believe in will direct uh, your behavior. Now, the competitive advantage. What we will do differently or better than competition to achieve our objective. What's your mission? Can you tell me in the next unit? Thank you for listening to me. Bye.